Hello and warm welcome to all the viewers. In this video, we will discuss the read operation of SRAM in detail. So as you can see, this is the circuit of SRAM. This is a six transistor circuit that I have designed in Cadence Virtuoso. We will be simulating this circuit also. We will be seeing the waveforms also. This circuit is complete with the pre-charging circuit. So first, let us look at the SRAM operation in details. Then we will do the simulation. So let us look at the SRAM cell of 6 transistor. So this is the circuit of SRAM cell of 6 transistors. So we can see that M2 and M1 form one inverter. Then M4 and M3 form second inverter. So this is a cross coupled inverter because the output of this inverter M2 and M1 is going as input to the this inverter formed by M4 and M3 and the output of the inverter formed by M4 and M3 is going to the input of the inverter formed by M2 and M1. So this is a cross couple inverter. Then M5 and M6 are NMOS transistors and they are connected to a line which is called as word line. Then these are also connected to these bit lines. So this is bit line and this is bit line bar. Now the output of M2 and M1 is called as Q bar and the output of M4 and M3 is called as Q. So we can see that this is a 6 transistor SRAM cell and CBL and CBL bar denote the capacitance of the bit lines. So CBL and CBL because these will be same. So that is why I have denoted as CBL. So bit line and bit line bar both these lines will have the capacitance CBL. So let us look at the read operation. So in the uh, read operation let suppose Q equal to 0 and Q bar equal to 1. So we want to read this both the Q and Q bar. So SRAM cell has stored Q and Q bar. So this cross coupled inverter Q and Q bar are stored in this. So to read this first we will pre-charge both the bit lines. So these both bit lines BL and BL bar will be pre-charged to high voltage VDD using a pre-charge circuit. Then this pre-charge circuit will be turned off and both these bit lines will be floating. So then for read operation we will make WL equal to high. So this is the word line this is called as word line WL. So for read operation we will make this WL high. So what it will do is it will turn on this M5 and M6 transistor and when this M5 and M6 are turned on then this bit line will have access to M2 M1 inverter and uh, this BL bar will have access to this Q bar. And this BL will have access to this value Q. So M5 and M6 are called as access transistors because they provide access for the bit line to this Q and for the bit line bar to this Q bar. So now if Q bar equal to 1. So we have considered that we want to read Q equal to 0 and Q bar equal to 1. So when Q bar is equal to 1, we can see that this Q bar is applied to this N gate of this N MOS transistor. So when the uh, gate of N MOS is connected to high voltage, then the N MOS will be on. Also, this same Q bar is connected to gate of this P MOS transistor M2. So that is why P MOS M2 will be off because its gate is connected to high voltage. Q bar is equal to 1 or logic high. Similarly, Q equal to 0 or logic 0. This Q is equal to 0 or it is logic 0. So if this Q equal to 0 logic 0 so it is applied this Q is applied to the gate of M3 and M4 transistor. M4 is your PMOS M3 is your NMOS. So Q is equal to 0 that is why PMOS M4 will be on and NMOS M3 will be off. So this is the equivalent circuit of our read operation. So we can see that M5 is on. So this M5, this transistor is on and we can see that M1 is on. 
so we can see that nmos m1 is on and m5 is on so this is m5 and m1 so this is on these two transistors are on and similarly m6 and m4 are on so this is m6 and m4 these are on so this is the circuit of uh, read operation equivalent circuit so we have uh, removed this this pmos that was connected here and this nmos that was connected here because they are off so now we will focus on this part we will focus on this part so we can see that we have a bit line capacitance and it is charged to vdd through the pre charge circuit then this m5 is replaced by a or it is modeled as a resistance so it is named as r5 then this m1 transistor it is also on so it is modeled as a resistance r1 so we can see we have a uh, rc type of circuit and this cbl is charged to vdd and this r1 is connected to ground so a discharge current will flow from this cbl to r1 so this discharge current will flow hence the voltage of the bit line will drop because of this discharge current but bl bar bl bar will remain at vdd why because this transistor we can see that this point is vdd because this uh, this transistor uh, is on so uh, this is vdd that is why this voltage will also be vdd and this bit line was pre charged to vdd so we can see that this point is at voltage vdd this point is also at voltage vdd so both the points are at same voltage so no current will flow no current will flow so the bit, uh, bit line bar this the second bit line or the bit line bar will remain at vdd so what is happening is that this bit line is getting discharged and this bit line is remaining at same voltage vdd so there will be a potential difference between this bit line and bit line bar due to this q equal to 0 so we can sense this uh, potential difference which has been developed using the sense amplifier also the very important thing to note is that when there is a discharge current that is flowing from at this path so this the voltage of this uh, point Q uh, which is I have denoted using this VQ this VQ is across this R1 so it will increase so the voltage of Q is rising so Q uh, remember Q was at 0 but uh, after this read operation the voltage of Q is rising due to the discharge of this bit line so when the voltage of Q rises it can lead to an issue called as read disturb so let us look at this read disturb phenomenon so we can see that this voltage of q uh, means the voltage at this point i am highlighting here the voltage of this point is rising this this point is connected to the gate of transistor m3 so remember earlier our m3 was off but if this voltage of q if this voltage rises beyond the threshold voltage of this transistor m3 then it will mean that this m3 will turn on when the m3 is turned on then we can see that q bar was at vdd so it will start to discharge through this ground because this m3 is on so when q bar starts to discharge then this q bar voltage will drop when q bar voltage will drop it will turn off m1 so m when m1 turn off then it will mean that M1 will turn off and M2 will turn on because the voltage of this uh, point Q bar is dropping and Q bar is applied to gate of PMOS transistor M2 and gate of NMOS transistor M1. So when the voltage of this Q bar decreases, it will turn off M1 and turn on M2. So Q will now change to logic high or 1. So it, it means that the states are getting flipped q was earlier at 0 and q bar was at 1 but because of the drop in voltage q bar is now becoming 0 and q is becoming 1 so the inputs are getting flipped because of the read phenomenon because of the read disturb phenomenon so it is not it is not ideal because when we are reading we do not want to destroy what is stored inside this cross coupled inverter so that is why now we move on to 
the sizing of SRAM transistors. So in this circuit, we can optimize the read operation. We only have one thing that is the size of the transistors. That is the only thing under our control. Also, one thing I forgot to share, then when the time constant, uh, this R5 and R1. So now the resistance is directly proportional to L by W. So when we size the transistors, then also the time constant of this circuit will increase or decrease. So and the time constant of this circuit denotes the time to read the state of this SRAM. So the sizing of the transistor will also affect how much time we are taking to do the or complete the read operation. So we have to make sure that this Q voltage remains below the threshold voltage of the M3 transistor. So we have to properly size the transistor. So we know that this transistor M5 is trying to pull up this voltage Q towards logic high and M1 transistor is trying to pull down the Q voltage to zero. So it means that if we want the voltage of this point Q to be zero or logic low, then we have to make this transistor M1 as stronger because it is pulling the it is pulling down this voltage of point Q. Whereas M5 is pulling this voltage to logic high. So M1 should be stronger, M5 should be weaker. So it means that the W by L ratio and what we mean by a strong transistor, more current should flow. So the W by L ratio of first transistor of, of M1 should be greater than W by L ratio of M5. But L is constant for the technology node, hence we increase the width of M1 transistor, channel width of M1 transistor. Now let us look at the current equations also. So from this figure we can see that the drain of M5 is at VDD, its source voltage is equal to VQ, its gate is at VDD because it was connected to bit line. The gate was connected to word line. So the gate is at VDD. Similarly for M1, its source is grounded. Gate is connected to Q bar. So gate is also, this gate is VDD and this drain is connected to VQ. So sim by simple understanding, we know that uh, we can see that this M1 is in linear region and M5 is in saturation region. Also they are connected in series. So their currents must be same. So we can see Kn5 upon 2, where Kn equal to mu n Cox W by L. Uh, that is the value of Kn. So it is equal to Vdd minus Vq minus Vt, Vgs minus uh, Vt square. Vg equal to Vd, Vs equal to Vq. So that is why. And we are considering that both all the NMOS transistors are at same threshold voltage. That is the assumption that we have made in this equation that uh, M5, M1 or all the NMOS transistors are having same threshold voltage Vt. Similarly for transistor uh, M1 we will have this equation twice of Vdd minus Vt, Vq minus Vq square. So we will get this relation 2 and 2 will get cancelled. So we will get this value of Kn5 upon Kn1. Now we know that uh, this uh, transistor M5 should be weaker compared to M1. So this value should be lesser. That is why I put the lesser sign because its value should be less than 1. Kn5 upon Kn1 should be less than 1. So that is why we can see this uh, equation uh, less than twice of Vdd minus 1.5 Vt into Vt upon Vdd minus Vt square. So uh, we can uh, find this uh, these two values. So now we are in the cadence virtue. So, so as you can see, these two transistors, these are connected to bit line and bit line bar. So this is a pre-charging circuit. It is enabled by this BL underscore EN means bit line enable signal. These are the access transistors. These are your cross coupled inverters. And so these access transistor gate is connected to word line. So we will be doing a transient simulation for this SRAM. So we are doing it for 11 nanoseconds. We will be plotting the outputs BL underscore bar, word line, uh, bit line, bit, bit line enable signal, Q bar and Q. So let us look at the setup also. 
so this word line signal is of bit so it it's uh, it is a, a signal of uh, period 5 nanosecond uh, and there is a delay of 2 nanosecond then we have this bit line enable signal so again it is a uh, fun it is of bit type so it its period is 5 nanosecond then we have vss so vss is obviously ground and we will also uh, assign a initial value of q uh, q and q bar using the convergence aid so we can go to simulation convergence aids node set so we will select so as you can see i have given uh, voltage 1 to q bar and 0 to q so these are the initial conditions now let us simulate and see the waveforms so as you can see in this waveform that the word line was enabled at 7 nanosecond the bit line was 1 volt the bit line enable signal was 1 volt till 5 nanosecond and after that is it was moved to 0 volt using convergence aids we set initially q equal to 0 so as you can see initially the q voltage is very small almost in micro volts and we set q bar equal to 1.2 volt so at 7 nanoseconds our bit line goes to very small voltage so as you can see the bit line voltage was 1 volt almost 926 millivolt and at 7 nanosecond when the word line was applied the bit line voltage goes to 487 millivolt and the bit line bar voltage remains high at 1.2 volt the bit line goes from 926 millivolt to 487 millivolt so we can see that the bit line voltage has dropped again we can see that the q bar which was 1.2 volt remained at almost 1.185 volt so there is no change in the voltage of q bar but the voltage of q which was 526 micro volt or we can see that 150 micro volt it went up to 166 millivolt so there is a small change in the value of q but it till still it is below the threshold voltage of the nmos transistor so we can see that this is a correct read operation the voltage of q is rising but it is not rising to affect the operation of the nmos so it is still it is below the threshold voltage of your nmos so this is the read operation is working nicely without any read disturb phenomenon 